So we have metadata that's generated fully automatically, which is pretty simple stuff. Data captured by the application or the operating system, and then we can add to that manually. But can we get past metadata generated semi-automatically? Can we take a resource and extract metadata from it can we read a document automatically and create metadata that way? And the answer is yes, we can. But only if the document has some structure to it already. Now, remember in Unit 5, I said that everything has structure. Everything has structure, though some things may have more structure to them than others. Even documents that are written in natural language, and natural language, remember, tends to be very loose. People have their own styles of writing. Natural language can be very narrative, and there's a lot of flow to it, and natural language is just messy stuff. But even documents written in natural language, which is to say, of course, most documents on the web, have some structure even if it's only the structure of formatting on the page. Paragraphs, sections, headers, whatnot. But the cool thing here is that we can use that structure, we can use that formatting as a hook to extract metadata from documents written in natural language. One category of application that's really at the forefront of extracting data from documents written in natural language using the structure of those documents is a type of application called citation managers. And if you're currently a student, I hope that you're already using one of these. If you're not, you really should be. Citation managers are a way to collect and manage metadata about the resources that you're using for your research. And I'm going to show you Zotero because that's the citation manager that I personally use, but there are many other citation manager applications out there, and you should look at a few of them and choose the one that you like best. So here is the Zotero application. Now, I have a very extensive Zotero library, but I'm showing you this application completely empty just to make it easier for you to see what I'm going to show you. Now, here's an article that just happens to have been published in today's edition of the Washington Post. Now, notice this icon in the URL bar right here. It looks like a little tiny newspaper. And I get that icon in the URL bar because I installed the Zotero plugin for Chrome, which is the browser that I'm using. But the point is, if I click on that icon, like so, notice down here, it now says saving to my library. And that is Zotero extracting data from this web page and importing it into the Zotero application. And now we see that data about that article from the Washington Post has now been imported into my Zotero library. And we get things like the fact that it's a newspaper article, we get the title, we get the author, we get the name of the newspaper, the date, the section of the newspaper that it's in, etc., etc. We get all of this data that Zotero extracted from that article and imported into my library. Now, where did all of this metadata about this article in the Washington Post come from? I have to tell you, honestly, I don't know. I don't know how Zotero works you would have to ask somebody who is a programmer for the Zotero project to answer that question. But if you look at the source code, if you look at the source code for this particular 
page, and I imagine the page for every article on the Washington Post, you see that there are lots of meta tags in here. And in fact, some of them are even in Dublin Core. I suspect that Zotero is grabbing that metadata. So, in this case at least, Zotero is not, strictly speaking, relying on the structure of a document to pull metadata from a web page. At least, I should say, if I were a programmer for the Zotero project, that's how I would do this. On the other hand, not every web page makes such extensive use of meta tags. Let's look, for example, at the web page for a particular item in a library's collection, in a library catalog. This page that we're looking at here is the entry for the book, The Discipline of Organizing, in the library catalog for the library at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And if you look in the source for this page, you won't find much Dublin Core metadata, and in fact, you won't find many meta tags at all. And notice that I get a different icon up here. It looks like a little book now, because Zotero recognizes that what it's looking at on the page is the entry for a book. Now, if I click that icon, like so, again, I get this box down here that says saving to my library and the entry for this book the and the metadata for this book is now being added to my Zotero library. And let's take a look at that entry in Zotero. We have things like the fact that this is a book, we have the title, we have the author, we have place of publication, we have publisher, and date of publication, etc. So again, we have to ask, how does Zotero extract that metadata? In the Washington Post example, again, I don't know, but I'm speculating that Zotero looked at the meta tags behind that page and grabbed that metadata from there. For this, there are no meta tags, so how does Zotero do its stuff? Answer, because this page has structure. So look here. We have the title of the book edited by author's name, or in Dublin core terms, creator. We have published by, and we have a place, we have a publisher, and we have a date. Now, I don't know how Zotero works its magic, but if I were to guess, I would say that Zotero parses the text on this page and infers that the value here, for example, next to the words edited by, means that it should interpret that value as creator. Or that if you find the word published with a colon after it, that the value after that should be interpreted as data about the publication and that you can do some pattern recognition to identify that that looks like a date and that looks like a place and fill in those values in the Zotero library. But again, it doesn't really matter how Zotero extracts metadata from web pages. The point is, we can create rich metadata automatically by relying on the structure of a document. And depending on what metadata you want to extract, you can grab different pieces of a document and you can identify those different pieces of a document because that document has some structure. Automatic metadata extraction is possible because things created by humans, human artifacts have some organization to them. Types of objects have structure that's specific to the type of object that they are. 